So here's another project for today. We are going to make a shelter, and I mean this is going to be a bomb-proof shelter. And what I'm about to do is going to prove that you don't have to have like all this super expensive gear to make something or, or to be prepared while you're out in the wilderness. Because we are going to use a 9 by 12 plastic drop cloth. And I do want you to get the thicker one. So you don't want much thinner than that because you do want something to hold up. Now that'll be the primary part of our shelter. Um, you could carve tent pegs and stuff. I'm just going to use some aluminum tent stakes for this. And then some utility cord. You can use paracord, whatever. But I'm just trying to prove that you don't have to have like 550 cord or anything like that. This is just some basic utility cord. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a basic A-frame shelter with no floor. And it this literally takes minutes to do. It's really easy. And it's something that like within a couple of minutes you can just have a bomb proof shelter so here we go i'm going to start and we're going to go through a couple of knots and just some basic stuff so that you know you have a good understanding of how to go through this one thing is we don't want to make this thing too high not not shoulder shoulder height is no good we want it, we don't want it much past you know, i would say between your waist in the bottom of your rib you know I'm gonna put it right about here waist in the bottom of my rib and I'm gonna start this whole thing out with a truckers a, um, a timber hitch which is super simple you just pull it around the tree fold over wrap four or five times two three four should be good enough for this and you don't need a huge tree, right? This, this is about this, I say soda can or bigger is totally fine to build any kind of shelter. Now this timber hitch is literally came from the timber industry. It's a friction knot, right? I could pull as hard on this thing as I want. It's not going anywhere. And what is keeping this knot in place is the friction between the rope in itself and the tree. So you don't want this float, floating out in space too much because you, you, this the, the, where it's touching the tree is part of the friction. So then I'm going to pull my, my cordage over to the other side. All right, so here we go. And as long as we have enough, a, a little bit of tension on that other side, we're going to be okay. The next knot is called an alpine loop. So I want to make a loop so that I can tie around the tree and come back and cinch down on this. Alpine loops, fairly simple, okay? This really is a fairly simple knot. And I'm just making sure I'm in frame here. You lay it over your hand. We're calling this inside, outside, middle. Then you take the outside here and pass it under and through. The beauty of this knot is you can put tension on it either direction and then I guess this is where it gets the butterfly name but if you pull on that boom it's like a magician's knot. So again inside outside middle take the outside and pull it all the way under and through super easy to do right. Then I'm going to come around the tree with the rest of my knot. I'm actually going to cut a piece of this off because we, we definitely don't need that much. And it's just getting in my way at this point. And normally I'd burn the ends of this cord, which I will later when I, when I go back home or whatever. But um, for now, we just want to keep this going. So I want to kind of level it up with the other side. I'm going to have to drop this camera down just a hair. Keeping it pretty level with the other side. And I'm still, I'm somewhere between my waist and, and here, right? So I've got this and I want to pull Now, I, put, I fished it through my alpine loop, 
and now I'm pulling tight and I'm telling you I don't know if you can hear that but it's like a guitar string it's it's getting so tight right so so now I pulled this real tight you got a pinch up here and I'll just pull back through with a little half hitch and then in front of it in front of all this stuff loop back through and pull it back man this 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 thing's not going anywhere ever I mean it may loosen up a little bit overnight from some stretch but I don't know if you can hear that but man I mean this thing is so tight it is I'm it, this thing is locked in it's not going anywhere all right so now we're going to do some stuff with our tarp got a little breeze going and one of the things I want to do is find that middle and for me this is an important part of it so now I got the middle and I want to reach in about a foot and a half to two feet right just just past my elbow so that's the middle and this is a place where I want for me to make what we call a, uh, a knot, right? Or something I can, something I can uh, tie off to. And I literally just will use crumbled up leaves or something like that. One thing to, to note, you don't want to puncture this tarp. You know, you want to, you may have to use this thing for a couple days. You might be in a tight spot. So whatever kind of duff you pick up off the forest floor or, or whatever to, to make your little knot and stuff and I mean you could even use like a, a an acorn if you want I mean this acorn will work just fine right I got it in there here's my knot for me I'm just gonna take I'm gonna literally create just the simplest um, uh, slip knot right slip knot super easy the slip knot is super easy. I literally, you take this cord, flip it over, and you could do this by rolling. Literally, take it like this, roll towards you. It almost makes it, and then roll it again. And you pull this up through. You've got, you've actually got a slip knot right now. Boom, and the slip knots come right undone. So roll, fold it over, pull through. There's your slip knot. So easy, man. So I'm gonna loop this around my knot. Actually, most, most of the time these are called buttons. That, that's what it is, the, the term is buttons, right? So now, this is secure on there and I can use this for all kinds of stuff. And I'm simply gonna just tie off this end with a couple half hitches to the end here. I wanna lock this sucker down. I don't wanna go on anywhere on me. Right, and I don't even have to, I'm not even really doing anything as far as, you know, I'm just coming back to this other end, right? Find in the middle, going up a little bit, right? I gotta get a knot or a button just make sure like I said if you're using leaves that you don't you're not picking up a ton of sticks you know I mean I would just pick up some leaves and uh, you know the little stem side I'm not going to hurt anything but you just don't want a big stick that's going to end up poking through so, so that one's a little acorn this one's just going to be a little bit of forest duff right roll towards you fold it over you've got yourself your little slip knot slip it on there Pull that man this sucker is not going anywhere and then i'm going to zoom in to show you what we call the prussic knot i'm going to tie what's called a prussic knot right so it's a little bit of a tough knot to do kind of one-handed but um <laughs> or with that you know before you do the slip knot so 
probably what I'm going to do is pull my slip knot just a little bit, release this down, because I wanted to, I wanted to show doing both ends, because I would probably do this first, right? So we want to pass both of these ends through this loop once, twice, and then a third time, and that's it. That you were we're good. In a pressing knot, you have to sort of work it a little bit. You have to make sure that the two um, the two sides the part that is going to come through here that we're going to be putting tension on is is the inside and then out and then head going outwards towards this loop now this is something that you can you you can adjust it but when it's under side tension it's not going anywhere and for me um, I just end up tying like a, just an overhand knot pretty close to the prusik because I you know I really only need one end for to secure to the button so I'll just kind of tie that that way that way this end's not hanging loose and it can't unravel or anything like that so then we're going to go back slip knot roll over done you, you got your slip knot right grabbing my button again pulling my pulling my uh, slip knot tight and now look I'm moving that and man I mean it is it is tight across here I mean if you look at this crazy tight right one of the things that I would do, first off, you can see how tight this is, and then this thing is banjo tight. Is I flip half of it over? And start working on, on one of my sides, right? Uh, and I'm not gonna work on this side. I'm, I'm actually kind of flip this up and do the back side because I want to. I'm not going to do all four corners. I'm just going to do one, and then we'll actually. I'll just do this corner real quick, and then we'll have a conversation, right? So uh, I want to get myself a a little slip knot, right? Super easy. The thing about this shelter is it's almost it's actually almost done. I could literally take a log or a rock or anything and put it at all four corners and your shelter is in place but for for right now we're just going to kind of do this because i want to there's some there's some stuff i want to show about setting this part of it up part of it is this right now remember i'm coming in that 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 aren't that part of an arm's length or, or what have you and I may actually need to come in a little bit more on this side. But uh, you see this, we want this triangle. I'm pulling down tight and I'm pulling across tight, right? So first thing we're gonna do is get our button going. And you know what, I'm just gonna use one of these egg corns. These things are great. Egg corns are great, make great little buttons, right? So I got this, slip my slip knot on. Pound my steak that I just made on in, and then really I can just tie off with a hitch or however you want to tie off your your uh, your your steak or what have you. You know, it's it's not that big of a deal. But the main thing is, you know, you've got this thing on here, and uh, And down and, and actually I probably want to make it a little closer just depending on the weather conditions you know you could get it to on the ground where this thing isn't you you see you know you've got your little three points of contact I'm gonna do this one more time over here just to just to make sure that we're we're uh, talking the same language and we're on the same page and everything get my little egg corn knot got my button here 
make them a little slip knot. Man, these are what an easy but super useful knot, right? And really, it's as simple as I could just make another slip knot real, real close to this, right? And uh, that could be what I use on my stake, you know, and just pull it, just pull it tight. Uh, here we go. We want the, we want to try to get the V, right? Got it pretty good here. <laughs> of course, the ground's giving me a little bit of trouble on this side, but. Whatever, I can move it around. I'm literally like there's a rock right there, but you can see this. And then what, what we end up doing with this part of it is we tuck this up under, and it's a little bit hard to see, but you actually have a door here. I mean, this is this is like an eight at this point. And so, say I need to move my button, I just undo my prosthetic a little bit, right? I'm gonna undo my my uh, my little button here. I'm gonna pull out my button. I'm gonna say, uh oh, I need to go in further. Went in further, pulled back out, doing my slip knot. Pull the sucker tight again. And now I got even more to work with, right? I, I, you know, so you can make these adjustments as you go. I mean, it's, it's, it's truly amazing, you know. And this thing, you know, the only thing, one thing I will say, I mean, I don't really have to worry about air not getting in there and stuff, but I would leave the top part on both ends open just a hair, just for the fact of circulation, you know, just not more air in, 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 in there. You probably get some condensation and stuff like that. And you know how do you keep how do you keep yourself warm here? This stuff right here, I would collect tons of it, and I mean, don't go, don't go. Uh, oh man, don't go getting all stingy with the with the uh, forest duff. I mean, really, really pile it up. My bare minimum is knee high, knee high of duff. And then you want to go through that duff and you want to pick out all the all the sticks and junk like that that are um, that could possibly you know like poke you in the back and stuff. And if you had another one of these tarps, even one of the cheapo, like I'll usually use uh, the two mil tarp and then get one of the like 0.9 or 0.7 thick tarps and um, and use that for uh, to make my mattress. And I'm telling you, once you're up off the ground, you know, because you make something, you know, this high of duff, by the time you're sleeping on it, you know, it's pressed down. But I'm telling you, it insulates you from the ground so well. And that's like one of the big, you know, conduction is a big heat loss mechanism. And you want to try to contain that. But you, I, I have slept in one of these for four days and three out of the four days it rained. And I had, I did have like a little bivy sack or whatever, but i uh, but it was basically, this was my shelter. And then I had a plastic mattress, like I'm saying, you know, of the thinner, um, of the thinner uh, type plastic and had my bivy on top of that. And I'm telling you, I was dry. I was snug as a bug on a rug. And I mean, it was the greatest thing ever. I, I just absolutely loved it. So... This, you, you can see, you got a really good idea of what this shelter looks like. I would say try to watch this a couple of times, you know. Repetition, 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 you know, is the way that we learn how to do this stuff. And if I could recommend anything to you, you saw me tie a couple of these knots. Well, I'll sit while I'm watching TV and my kids are doing something, my wife will be doing her thing, and I have about a six to eight foot piece of paracord and I will just sit and I'll just tie these knots, the alpine loop, the slip knot, you know, um, I know how to tie a bowline knot, you know, so I practice that, you know, and I tie all these little knots to maintain my skill set. And, um, you know, it, we'll go inside and do a little bit of wrap up after this, you know, I'm going to uh, box all this stuff up and everything, but, you know, I hope this was educational for you because this, this, 
it doesn't have to be the most expensive gear or anything. And you could whip this thing up, you know. I mean, I did this in less than five minutes, you know. And if I was not filming and trying to slow down and do stuff, this thing would be up in like two minutes. I, I'm not even kidding. You know, I'd be, by now, I'd be, I'd already have my duff pile up and, you know, thinking about settling in for the night and, you know, checking the wind direction and getting a fire pit set up and, you know, you're thinking about starting a fire and stuff like that. So just all stuff to think about and uh anyways yeah thanks